Hello guys, so welcome to our uh, fourth week and this is lecture seven. So in that part of the lecture, or that, you know, that part of the course, basically, we're gonna study the minimization using, you know, some other tools rather than the analytical method that we discussed so far, okay? So till this moment, we learned one skill to, if you have a function, a Boolean function, okay, X plus, you know, Y bar Z, whatever, you know, uh, we know one way to minimize it which is analytical methods using, uh, you know, the, the, the theorems and the postulates that we discussed and learned so far in the previous weeks, okay? So today we're gonna uh, uh, study uh, or start studying some systematic approaches, you know. Uh, these approaches are systematic in a way that uh, they can prove for you that there is no further uh, simplification. Okay, they will, uh, you know, do the same skills of analytical minimization, but in a systematic way. I mean, you don't need to think about taking common factors, you know, adding X, X bar or multiplying by Z uh, plus Z bar, you know, all such tricks that we did in the analytical method. Actually, this method, uh, as we will learn, you know, are doing such, uh, uh, you know, additions and, uh, multiplication or ending, but implicitly, as we will see, okay? Uh, one is the first and the most famous method is called Carnot map or Carnot map, you know. Uh, this Carnot is a guy that uh, invented such, such method, which is really brilliant, okay, method. Uh, and for short, they call it K-maps, just K-maps. No need to, to say Carnot each time, okay? So basically, K-maps is performing the analytical minimizations that we did, okay? But in a visual way. Uh, I mean, you're gonna draw a table, you know, you're gonna represent your Boolean function in that table in some way. Then uh, Carnot map will do the minimization for you. But in a visual method, I mean, you should look at the, look at this table, look at this graph or map, basically. And based on some properties, you can simplify the function. Okay. Uh, one basic advantage of Carnot, Carnot map, rather than, you know, it's, it's a minimization. The product, I mean, not product, not to uh, confuse things. I mean, the final shape or the expression for the function will be uh, sum of products or product of some. And we discussed last time, last lecture, why we like such kind of, uh, you know, shape of functions, of Boolean functions, because this is basically minimizes our uh, delay. Because if you have some product, for example, you will have one level of AND gates, then another level with just one OR gate, okay? And the product of some, you have something uh, similar, but the first level will be all gates, then the second level uh, is, is one and again. But basically we have two levels, okay? And we see examples that if we didn't uh, express our uh, functions as some product or product of some, you may end up with more than two levels, okay? But the main disadvantage of such method KMAP is that it's not suitable for uh, functions that are function of uh, more than five, Boolean, but actually with, even with five Boolean values, it's still uh, not that flexible to use. Okay, as we will see uh, later in that, in that week. Okay, so let's start by uh, two variable uh, K-map, okay? I mean, the map that you're gonna draw or plot, okay? For if, you, if, your, if your function is a function of two Boolean variables, like for example, if equal to X, Y plus X, something like this. Okay, we have here two Boolean variables, X and Y. So what is the basic idea of this? Actually for two, uh, it will note that uh, when, we, when we study the three uh, variable K map, you know, the idea behind the K map will be much more clear, but we'll get some insight also from the two, two, variable, uh, two, two variable map as well, okay? So let's, uh, let's, let's discuss how K map, how Carnot, you know, think about this, this map first. So if you have two functions, uh, if you have two variables, X and Y, uh, basically you have four main terms. You have M0, you have M1, 
M2, M3. M0 is X bar, Y bar. M1 is X bar, Y. M2 is X, Y bar. M3 is X, Y. Okay? Then the Carnot map, since you have four uh, combinations, okay, out of these four main terms, then the Carnot map will be four uh, cells. You know, a map, a table that have four cells, like this. So this is the K map for two variables. How we construct the map? So here, uh, you know, it's it's already filled M0, M1, M2, M3. But uh, if you just follow this approach with three, four, you will you will get uh, incorrect results. So let's learn how this, uh, you know, how we could fill this two variable map in that way: M0, M1, M2, M3, M0, M1, M2, M3. So okay. So we have two variables. Each variable can have two values, zero or one, right? So this is X, this is Y, okay? So these two rows represent the values of X. These two columns represent the values of Y, okay? So if this is zero and this is one, as we see here, and this is zero and this is one for X, then, the first cell here is zero, zero. The second cell is zero X, one in Y, so this is uh, zero, one. So this is zero, zero, and zero, zero is M zero, right? Or X bar, Y bar. And uh, this is zero in X, one in Y, so zero, one, which is M one, or X bar Y. Then we have here one, and Y is zero, so this is one, zero. One, zero is M two, which is X, Y bar. And finally, you have here one and one, which is one, one. So this is X, Y, X, and Y. Okay? There is no minimization yet. Uh, we are building a map with number of cells equal to the total number of, of, of main terms that you're going to have, you might have. Okay? So if you have two variables, you might have up to four main terms. So we need a map with uh, four cells. Okay? And remember, each a function, any function, any Boolean function can be, can be represented as sum of main terms. Okay. So we need to know which uh, cell represent which, or what cell represent what uh, main term. Okay. So we, need, we now we know the shape of the of the map. It came up for two variables. And we know which cell represent what uh, what mentor. So let's have an example, okay, and see how we're gonna use such a map to simplify a function. So let's start by this 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 function. F one is equal to m one m two m three, m one m two m three. Okay, and I will do both both minimize, minimizations the ones that, the ones that we learned analytical one and the one with using using K maps, okay? And I uh, I will prove for you now using that example that K map is just analytical proof, but in a very systematic way, okay? Without need, without the need to do any trick or something. So let's do the minimization first using analytical, okay? So if one equal to M1 plus M2 plus M3. What is M1? Let's look back here. Zero, one, which is X bar Y. What is M2? This guy, X, Y bar. What is M3? It's X, Y. Okay. So let's write it here. X bar Y plus X, Y bar plus X, Y. You may say, okay, to minimize this, just forget about KMAB now, we are doing it analytically. So to minimize this, you may say, we're gonna take these two terms together. Uh, you, you might take X as a common factor from these two terms, 
So you will end up with y, y bar. So let's do this on a side here. So if we take x, y bar plus x, y, you can take x as a common factor. So we end up with y, y bar, right? Which is x. Some other guy may say, no, I'm going to take this guy with this guy. Then take y as a common factor. So in the y multiplied by x plus x, y, which is y, right? So we might think that we're going to take x bar y plus x, y. So then we take y as a common factor. So we end up with x plus x bar here, which is y. Okay. So we now we need to another term called x, y. So we take one with uh, x bar y and the other one with, with uh, uh, x, y bar, right? So we're going to add here x, y. And we don't we don't do anything you know wrong. We didn't add something you know because you know x plus x is just x, and y plus y is just y, right? So x y plus x y just x y. Okay. Then let's write this. Uh, you know, let's, let's remove uh, let's remove those here, and just make it uh, uh, in a neat way using another color. So then we're gonna use this with this, then this. With this, okay. Let's go back to our color here, as a black. So, if we the first two, which is x bar y plus x y bar, we're gonna take y as a common factor, so we end up x plus x bar, or x bar plus x. And then the other uh, couple here will take x as a common factor, so y bar plus uh, y. So the first one will give us y, the second one will give us x. So the final shape of f is yx. This is the final shape. Right? We can't go further. We can't go further. We can't do any other minimization. Okay? This is the most primitive, you know, shape for or expression for f1. But we minimize it. So Let's see now how to do that using Carnot map. So we did it in using, using the analytical uh, method. Okay. Uh, so let's learn how to do that in Carnot map. So you, here we have the solution. But I will show you guys how we could do that. So basically, F is equal to M2 plus M3 plus M4. Okay. So basically, you put ones in these locations, the locations that re represent M2. The locations that represent M3, the locations, the locations that represent M1. So here we have M1, M2, M3. Then the locations that has, uh, you know, that is not represented in the function, you put zero there. You may find in some books that they, they leave it, like for example, in, in, in Manu's book, so the, he leaves, you know, uh, this is empty. But, you know, in the future, we will, we will learn that some functions, some functions, you know, are not represented for some kind of, uh, you know, for, for some main terms. And it's beneficial there not to go both zero. I will see that, we will see that, okay? So for now, if there is main term that is not represent, representing in, uh, represented in the function, you put zero there. And in our case here, f is equal to m1 plus m2 plus m3. m0 is not represented, so we put zero in its location. The second step is, is to group the adjacent ones. Group the, I mean, if you have two, one, two ones adjacent to each other in, in, in adjacent cells, then you group them. You group them, okay? How, how, how if you have four ones, I mean, if you have, in, we have here four cells, if all of them is, is, is ones, then you can grow all of them in, uh, in one cell. And this cell has uh, one group, and this group has four ones. If we have eight, yes, for two variables, the maximum number of cells here is four, but for three variables, we will have a map with eight cells. If you have eight, then that's fine. So basically, you group two ones, two adjacent ones, four adjacent ones, eight adjacent ones, 16 adjacent ones, 32, 64, you know, and so on. Okay. 
and we learn why in you know maybe next video is a video next why uh, two ones four ones eight one why not three why not five why it must be multiple of twos okay so we learn that in the in the future videos but we'll have a, you know a kind of idea now so this one and this one are adjacent to each other and this one as well and this one as well is are also adjacent to each other so we have two groups so let's have another color so we have this group here and we have another group here okay each group will give us a term in the in the minimized f function remember we want to minimize f okay so uh, we have here two groups each group will give us you know one of the terms so let's start by the green one the green group between m2 and m3 so you look for the variable that has a change in, in its value okay and is a variable then you exclude this guy or you look for the value or the variable i'm sorry the boolean value that has no change in its value and f will be exhibited with this variable variable or variables maybe you have many variables that has no change in the, in the same group so if we look at the green group here x all the time is one Remember M2 is, you know, M2 is uh, X Y bar and M3 is uh, X Y. So X and X, but M2 has Y bar and M3 has Y, right? So Y change its value or you can look for, for from the map itself. So this row here, all the value in that row has X, has, has one. But this column has a y of zero. This column has a y of one. So why it changes its value? So basically, this will give us x. So f one, let's write it. F one will give us uh, f one is equal to the first group term, which is x. Now the second group, the blue group. Let's do it with the blue. We look for the variable that has no change in its value or the variable that has a change then exclude it and take the other one. Okay, we'll do both now. So the, the, uh, these, this group is in one column, the same column, right? And this column of, is the column in which Y is one. Y has no change. I mean, this, this cell or this cell, in these two cells, Y is one all the time. Why? Let's check. M1 is X bar Y. And M3 is XY. So you have Y and Y, which is one, but you have an M2 X bar and you have an M3 X, uh, only X. So from X bar and X, so X has changed its value. So this, this group will give us Y. Again here, look, this cell here has x0, which is x1, and this cell here has x1. So the final f is x or y, which is basically what we get from the analytical group. Okay. Now the question. I said in the beginning that Carnot map is just a systematic way to do the analytical group. How is that? I did it. So let's see, let's see. Let's write down what I have just said uh, using just, you know, uh, orally, we can say. So let's start by the green group. So what I have done with the green group, I just uh, all them together and they take effect. All of this, you know, happens implicitly. So the green group, M2 is X, Y bar. M3 is X, Y. If you want to do this implicitly, what you're going to do? You, you will take X as a common factor. Then you will end up with Y bar plus Y, right? 
which is X. So look here, X doesn't change its value. So in the first term is one, in the second term is one, or X and X, okay? But why it changed its value? That's why I said to you, look for the variable that has no change in its value. And so this will be, uh, this will be in the final representation of F, or look for the variable that has a change in its value and exclude it and take the other one. So if we look at Y, why it changes its value from y from y bar to y or zero to one? So we exclude it, we take the other one, which is x. So this this is a green group will give us x. This is basically, you know, where is exactly uh, x uh, y bar plus yeah, this is this is that is step here. These are the two which is exactly those guys, okay? And look here, in, in our analytical proof, we did that by adding, the trick here is to add another term called xy, which was not in the, in the original expression for f. So we did everything systematically. We didn't do any tricks. You know, we didn't, you know, look, oh, we need another term called xy, so let's or it. And you know this will not affect the far because we uh, we uh, we have added you know another term that's already there. So this plus this equal to the same. You know we didn't think all such thinking, just a systematic approach, and using just usual usual uh, visual you know visual uh, you know observation we could do the, the the simplification. And the same for the blue group, we did also some simplification there. Okay, so M1 plus M3, X bar Y plus XY. What is common here? What is, you know, what, what is the variable that doesn't change its, its value? It's Y, it's in both cases one. What is the value variable that it's, it changes its value? It's X because it's all X bar in the first term and X in the second term. This will give us Y. Again, which which exactly this this operation here is exactly this one. And again, uh, we didn't we didn't we we haven't you know had to add another term you know everything is systematic here. Okay. Let's take another example. This is you know uh, different is. I'm saying here, can we simplify F2 equal to M0 plus M3? Okay. So if we write F2, F2 is M0 plus M3, which is X bar Y bar plus XY. It's not clear. Do we have some trick to do so we can simplify uh, F2 more? I mean, if we didn't learn the Karnoff map, it's really hard to answer this question. Okay. It's really hard. What was kind of map we can definitely say if we can simplify or not or, or, uh, more or not. Okay, just look at the, you know, kind of map of this. So here, M is zero, so we put one at the M is zero place. And the M is three, which is X, Y, we put one at M is three place. Then we look for the adjacent ones. Do we have adjacent ones here? No. Adjacent ones, this and this maybe, okay. Uh, this is and this one. Okay, okay, this one and this one, okay. Uh, this one and this one, okay. All the four, okay. But we don't take, you know, uh, diagonal, diagonal ones, why? Why we can't take adjacent ones, okay, and or, 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 uh, or yeah, or, but we can't take the diagonal ones, why is this? Because the diagonal ones, you know, has no common factors, if you look, this guy and this guy. Let's 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 check them. This is M two, which is uh, M zero one M two. It's a X Y bar uh, X bar Y or uh, X Y. I'm sorry, X X Y bar. Okay. This is M three, which is X Y. So you have common factor between these two. How about this guy? This guy is M one, which is X uh, bar Y. 
look at this and this. See, you have a common factor, right? How about this one? This is x bar, y bar. So this with this, x bar is a common factor. How about this with this? Y bar is a common factor, okay? But the diagonal, diagonal, diagonal uh, groups has no factors. So in analytical uh, minimization, you cannot take a common factor, okay? That's a proof. That's a proof that we cannot minimize more F2. And the M F2 equal to uh, X bar Y bar plus X Y is, 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 is the final, final expression. We cannot go, you know, uh, further down. We can't we can simplify this more, more. And basically, if you, if you remember guys, this is basically X, X nor Y. This is from previous lecture. If X nor and X or can be simplified, you know, we don't need them, right? Because if they can be simplified, then the, the rule will be vanished, okay? They are atomic. You can't simplify more. They are just, they are essential, just like and, or, and not. And nor and X nor. Uh, yeah, nor and nand, I'm sorry, yeah. okay? So this is basically a very good introduction about kind of map using two variables. Now we know what is the idea behind, you know, uh, grouping the ones. This is basically a simplification, you know, why it's so uh, powerful way uh, or brilliant way to do simplification because you don't have to, you know, think about adding terms or, you know, multiplying by terms, you know, uh, these tricks that we did in, uh, in, uh, in analytical, you know, simplification, we don't have to do any more. Actually, they are done implicitly for you, okay? And one, you know, uh, one uh, other advantage for this key map is that it will answer for you if we can simplify more an expression or not. This is really hard to answer using analytical, you know, minimization, analytical algebra or Boolean algebra, okay? But here, just both the, both the ones on the map, if, if you don't have, uh, you know, ones, I mean, I'm sorry, adjacent ones, then you cannot go further. You cannot do more simplification. Okay, guys, so this is basically Carnot map for two variables. We will start, you know, from the next video, Carnot map for three or more variables. Thank you very much and stay tuned for this. Bye-bye.